Hello, Pumpkin, are you there? I have a wonderful question here from Mr. Christopher Harvey, and he is asking me about the BlackRock ETF for Bitcoin. Will it impact the effect of the bull markets from then on? Question from Mr. Christopher Harvey. Could this result in this being the last real bull run? Let me tell you something. Ever since I've been in crypto, since 20, 2018, I have heard this expression, the last bull run ever. Every single time we got bullish. The only difference is this. Let's bring up a chart, friends. The only difference is when I was looking at them from before, no one was actually bullish. It was disaster. Like when we were down here, no one was talking about the last real bull run. Everybody thought the 2017 was the last real bull run. And let me elaborate for you. They were actually right. If you look at what we got in 2021, it was shocking. This was trash. They printed plus 40% of the money supply, plus 40% money supply, okay, and 0% interest rates and 16 trillion in negative yielding bonds, okay? They did all of this, friends, and we still got the worst performing old season of all time. I need you to have an appreciation for this, just like how I appreciate you. Thank you for liking, subscribing, press the bell button, and all friends. I want you to know this, please. This is important, man, because this is going to be our informational guide for the next bull run. We will be able to front run the crowd just in case there are signs that it stalls out. So even with excessive money printing, 0% interest rates, all this money trapped in negative yielding bonds, our friend Bitcoin couldn't hit $100,000 out of all of that. That's crazy. Remember, you still had Michael Saylor going cybernetic hornet's nest, literally at the top, leverage buying everything. You had El Salvador, you had everybody pumping it. We still couldn't get there? What a joke. What an absolute joke. Was it a joke? We all know, friends, something was going on here. All right, something was going on. As a commodity, you don't have these rounded tops. Commodities do not have rounded tops. Commodities have parabolic tops, just like oil, just like gold. Why? That's because they can't increase the supply fast enough. So when there's demand that comes in, you can't get it out there to be able to squash the demand. It takes time for the miners to produce. But for some reason, we got the yip, 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 yip. Every single person was saying, this is weird how it's around the top. You know what they're actually meaning? When they're saying this is weird, it's around the top. It means, yeah, it means someone is manipulating something here. We should be up much higher. So this is our clue. Remember, BlackRock technically wasn't in here. I mean, they've been in for a long time. They've been watching this industry, friends. BlackRock are the government puppet wing arm. They're like just like the SEC. They're just the guys who control the wallet. The SEC control the gates. They control the gates for the US government, for the banking cartel, for the US Fed, right? And the, the wallet is BlackRock. So they're all part of the same beast. So even with all these, we still couldn't force it up there. It's something to think about. Now, Mr. Christopher Harvey would like to know, because of this BlackRock scamming, friends, so if we actually get up here, will it mean we're going to have the last real bull run? Well, no, because there's something interesting with crypto. Even though we have a four-year cycle for the Bitcoin halvening, I'll tell you something right now. We seem to follow a business cycle. So before the US government started manipulating the business cycle, the business cycle lasted about five years-ish, five, 5.5 years. And you have like, you know, four years of growth, 1.5 years of poop. Usually it would go something like that. It's a bit shorter probably for us because we're in the crypto lands, digital cyberspace, but there is a cycle. But let me elaborate. We are running out of casino pumps. What do I mean by casino pumps? It's exactly what you think it means, okay? In the early days of crypto, everybody thought mind-blowing technology, and they were right. But you all know everybody's coming for the casino. But the rate of people being able to accelerate the price because they're coming in for the casino, the rate of their power has diminished more and more because... They're not early anymore because it takes more and more economic energy to push up. Precisely what I mean is the offers are now thicker. 
you used to probably have $100,000 offers up here. Then it turned to $1 million offers. Then in 2017, turned into $5 million offers. Now in 2021, we had like $50 million offers. You need to clear $100 million here and there. I remember even once F2 pool, right, the evil Chinese miners who betrayed everybody, just one of the many parties who betrayed everybody, they dumped like 14,000 Bitcoin in one go. So they're just absolutely trash. So 14,000 Bitcoin, friends, at 48K is, let's just have a look at that number. Wow, $672 million needed to push through that. This is why when I have my wonderful core altcoins, friends, and I'm just going to show you the friendly core altcoins out there, I understand how thin their liquidity is, and I like it. I like it. Liquidity is just the size of the door. I want to be a part of a subset of coins in crypto where I know when demand comes, if demand ever comes, and we don't know if it will, we're just, guaranteed, we're just lucky this thing even works, if demand comes, you have a tiny little door that only a mouse can fit in. Here's our little door, right? But when you're in Bitcoin, you didn't have a door, man. You've literally got double wide shopping center, super wide. You got a freaking garage, man. It's a garage and it just lifts up and it lets like all these people in. Like, well, who are we gonna we gotta rush in? It can lit, it can fit semi trucks. It's like a hangar for a plane. So you want something with a very small door. So right now, no one wants to enter the door, but the door's tiny. It's, we got such a tiny door in these. It's why when I'm talking about Chainlink, Hex, PulseX, PulseChain, even Hedron and Icosa, part of the Hex ecosystem and PulseChain ecosystem, and of course, poor Pleb itself, they have very small doors. The liquidity is tiny. But Bitcoin, its liquidity is thick, thick and juicy, friends, like a freshly cut orange, right, ready for eating. So... Is there going to be another cycle from here on? It, it will be, but it's going to be less casino, just like the stock market. You know, in the stock market, in the early days of the stonks, friends, early days of the stonks, so in the 1990s, you had the tech boom, okay? Yeah, the tech boom of the 1990s. Actually, I could just bring it up here for you just to show you exactly what we're talking about because in the tech boom, it's a perfect example here to illustrate what's happening on this time frame, you see, back in the days, we had the tech boom here. Oh, what a bubble. Hello. Look at this bubble. Imagine we got something like that. So the tech boom, NASDAQ, this is a NASDAQ here. The internet changed the world. It did change the world. Let's put on a log. I mean, it's still, it's ridiculous even on a log chart. So yeah, it changed the world. But then it just became pets.com and just anything with a .com website and everything going on. And it was really the birth of the mega speculation. And then the big old pop. Now, this was enormous, by the way. This size was $3 trillion. If you translate that to today's money, oh, man, that's like the equivalent of crypto bubbling up to like $10 trillion of today. Can you imagine that? That is like crypto growing 3x its size or maybe even bigger because this is crazy, man. This this wasn't even network effects, friends. This was literally just people ticker symbols, okay? This is no such thing as international network effects or anything. And many companies never actually recovered from here. Like Cisco was the biggest company in the world, but they never had any chance to recover this type of casino speculation. It is possible. What we're looking at with Bitcoin is, and, and crypto after this ETF, it's possible that, yes, we're still going to go up. We'll go up. But what's going to bring us up is not going to be the poop. So during the pets.com, this is the, you know, the NASDAQ bubble up here. This was like absolute garbage, trash. No one's making any real money. There was no what they call fundamentals, a complete disconnect. It was just everybody with a website, et cetera, et cetera. But then what did you get birthed out of it? You got your Facebooks here. You got Apple innovating, Apple with the iPhone. You had Amazon continue to push through. You had Google continue to push through. You had Apple, Google, Amazon, even Tesla, all these great companies. You had the Netflix. You had all these. Now, I know this is going to sound great, but it's not as easy as we think because this is survivorship bias because I'm listing for you the giants. The Apples, the Googles, the household names. Yeah, there's like 4,000 that didn't make it. How are you supposed to pick the right ones? I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know. So if we go and we look at just crypto itself, we can have a look at total crypto market cap. Here you are. Thank you very much. It's possible that 
with this BlackRock ETF, yeah, this might be the end of the casino. It's possible. It's possible. I, I can't give you any any answers. But there's always going to be hope in. This is why we have to remain neutral and independent. Because after BlackRock ETF, after BlackRock Bitcoin ETF, right, the Bitcoin maxis, right, who we need and we love, will say, one, there's still all the countries in the world, in the world, who must adopt Bitcoin by printing their currency and buying it up before their competitors do. Okay, so this is super important, friends. So that's it. After the BlackRock ETF, this is what the Bitcoin Maxis will say. This is one of their points. And hey, you know, it's it's very easy for us to believe this. Okay, so I've just got to re reiterate to you. So you already have El Salvador in, okay? So now that El Salvador's in, potentially in the next bull market, we're going to see another few countries next to them. Uh, or also on the economic scale, maybe third world countries, maybe someone else adopts it. Someone from South South Africa, you know, maybe the maybe a country where their predominant currency is currently fluffy slippers. They're like, you know what, fluffy slippers, they're cool, but we want to use some Bitcoin. And what happens is when they adopt it, it gives you an idea to everybody else. And then you have Michael Saylor. By the way, just to let you know as well, Michael Saylor's gone on interviews recently. He's talking about Turkey. Okay, now you know what Turkey is. Turkey is a country, but also Turkey is nice sometimes. Okay, so Turkey is currently in debt. Their currency is poop. They've lost like, you know, 40% value of like the last few years. They're going to drop around 90%. It's ridiculous. But Turkey have an option. Turkey can right now, they can literally go to their treasury right here and they can just go buy Bitcoin with their gold. So Turkey own gold. Turkey own gold right now. They can go buy Bitcoin. This is actually what Michael Saylor has been telling him to do. And I mean, friends, like they're about to tell us that aliens are real. All right. So is it out of this world to imagine that a country is just going to go back? You know what? Let's just do this Bitcoin thing. I, it's, it's it's not unheard of. Of course you can do it. You know, El Salvador did it. So this is the first steps being done. Now, if Turkey here with their gobble gobbles, if they actually convert some of their gold and start buying Bitcoin and do it in secret, oh man, we're going to have a whirlwind of pumper mentals going up. Wouldn't that be great if this actually forces Bitcoin's price over $100,000 and it will squash my fears about the, the dark prophecy curse? That would be fantastic. That might be some sort of white swan event to actually push us through. That's what this BlackRock ETF, that's why it's unknown. So this BlackRock ETF, it might push Bitcoin up into white swan territory. And I've given you an example here. Turkey is one country. And if they do this, they can't, if they don't do this, their country's, currency is going to go to poop. So this is one way for them to take a punt and for them to win. Um, now, obviously, the business cycle for crypto is going to continue. But we don't know wh who's going to be the next Amazons and Googles and all the other amazing stuff that's going to carry the industry in the next wave. We don't know that. You know, back in the NASDAQ, with that tech bubble, uh, in, the in, the, the, in the ashes of that when everything exploded... Once everything started recovering, it's not like you had uh, 500 big coins. It's not like, yeah, it's not like you had like 500 tech coins to just like buy everything. It was like this. I'm not even joking. Okay. It was literally, there were like eight coins here to buy and then everything else is poop. I'm not joking. Okay. He's a little poop, smiley face. There's literally like eight coins. The whole NASDAQ, the entire bull run was literally just the top eight to top 10 companies dragging the next 300. And I'm not even kidding. Apple, Amazon, they just kept continuing to grow and grow and grow. Apple and Amazon grow to huge size. Google carried everybody. And I'm not even joking with these numbers. Literally, the top, the very top carried everyone. So are we going to see something in crypto? This is why it's so important to see where is the next blue chip going to be made. There's so much money to be found in the blue chip. So you might equate this in crypto to something like looking at the market cap of crypto in 2030. And we might look back and say, oh, wait, well, it was Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then you'll probably name another like six coins. So obviously our job here as friends is to find what are those next six coins. Now I can come here and sit here and tell you Chainlink. I can come and sit here and tell you any other coin, but we, d we don't know. We're just, I promise you, we're just guessing and we're hoping and it is what it is. And it's also possible that you can have the right answer for 2030, 
But with these next multiple series of old seasons that we may experience, it might be possible that they might be the wrong move in terms of like picking the next type of Doge pump up or not. So will it be the last bull run? Absolutely not. But as we move further in time, Mr. Christopher Harvey, the chances of us being able to buy absolute poopy McPoop, yes, the chances of us being able to do that and win, they will start to diminish greatly because the market's getting smarter. In a nutshell, we, because crypto is now 14 years old, we are running out of DGENs in the world. Now, they still exist, but the amount of DGENs and the wealth of DGENs that we onboard, we're running out of them. We're running out of them in numbers and dollar amounts, which means DGENs come and buy poop. So if they're not going to be around as much, we have to go to where the quote unquote serious money is going to invest next. So, yes. They're probably going to look at stable communities. They're probably going to look at whoever makes a new application. Maybe somebody makes a new super app. Whatever it is, friends, we got to keep a very open mind because we are just at the first inning and it's barely, get, barely getting started. So, you know, is it going to be the last bull run? Absolutely not. But is it going to be the last bull run that we know where the DGENs are in control? Perhaps. But you know what's always in control? You and I, we're always going to have our friendship. Tell mom and dad. This peanut is going to do better than you think. Like, subscribe, press the bell button, and all. I'm going to catch you in the next one.